Hello anglers, this is Juan Brute from Juan Brute Fishing and I'm waving a shoe at you today because I'm going to talk to you about my seven day torture test of the Topo Athletic Ultra Venture shoe. It's a trail runner that I use for backpacking. So if you're a backpacking angler, definitely stay tuned. Also, if you're into all kinds of angling pursuits, you know, I, I post videos about kayak fishing. I post videos about conventional fishing. I post videos about backpack fishing and fly fishing. So if you're into that stuff, definitely like my YouTube channel and check it out because from time to time, I'll be having all kinds of different topics. I can't arrive on something I really like to do. I love kayaking, I love backpacking, I love fly fishing, I love conventional fishing. So that's what my channel is all about because I can't decide what I like better. So I don't have to decide. I like everything. So today I'm going to talk to you about these Ultra Ventures. They're a shoe that I arrived at uh, after trying several different uh, um, hiking options. I tried a hiking boot when backpacking. Didn't like it because they're heavy. Uh, they're uncomfortable for me. And uh, and I you know I don't carry heavy weights. I mean my my base weight is around between 10 to 15 pounds typically. And uh, and so my total pack weight is only around 30 maybe 35 pounds, 30, 35 pounds at most. And so I really don't need a heavy boot with a lot of ankle support. Uh, and just the way I hike and the way I move, I like having a trail runner. So this is the Ultra Venture and I put it through a kind of a seven day uh, torture test in the Smoky Mountains. And you know, in looking at this, this shoe after seven days, I will tell you here is why I call it a torture test. This is really a review because I use this shoe in a way that you should probably not use the shoe um, in a way that uh, probably the, the manufacturers say, don't use the shoe for this, right? Um, yes, it's designed to get wet, it's designed to drain, it's designed to dry fast. But what I did with this shoe in the Smokies was for seven days, this was my primary shoe for fishing, wade fishing, and hiking. This shoe was completely wet for seven days because in the Smokies it was really humid. It was kind of rainy a few days. Nothing was drying out. I mean, nothing was drying out. Not even uh, really light, you know, breathable shirts on lines. Didn't, didn't, we could have them out for a whole day and they weren't drying out. So it was very humid conditions um, in the Smokies. And this shoe was wet completely the whole time. Uh, you know, it did sort of dry out when I let them out overnight and just kind of let them sit. I might've got a little bit of sun in the morning, but that was it because I was putting them on and getting back out fishing. So I use these things as wading shoes too. And I think that for a, for a trail runner, like getting a shoe wet is probably one of the most, and keeping it wet and wading in it is probably one of the things that could put a beating on shoes faster than anything else. Yeah, trail runners made to get wet because you're running in the mud and the, the snow, the rain and those kind of things. But I'm talking about heavy duty wading in creeks, through rapids, um, you know, scuffing rocks, all kinds of things. I mean, if you're uh, an angler and you have waders and you've ever had wading shoes, I've worn out wading shoes that were built for wading, uh, you know, with my waders. I've worn them out in a month or so in some brands and, and they're expensive shoes. And so this was really a torture test of the Topo shoe. Um, I'm looking at my Topo shoes now and I'll tell you the things that I was looking at, like after that amount of time of being wet, wading in the shoe, I mean wading in boulders and rocks and scuffing all over the place. So there was a lot going on. And then walking, we walked about five miles each day for fishing, either in the water or out of the water on trail. Total of five miles was about our average four to five mile, miles daily. Plus we had a 10 mile hike in to our base camp and then you know, our seven mile in our first base camp, another three miles to our second base camp, and then back 10 miles back to the, the pickup point uh, where the boat met us. And so those shoes were wet the entire time for all my hikes, uh, for all my fishing. And uh, number one, you know, just the comfort level of the shoe. I used it with a toe, really light toe sock, and I had no, zero hot spots, regardless of whether it was wet um, or not, uh, zero hot spots using this uh, kind of thin toe sock. Um, and, they, and they were wet too the entire time. Uh, and everybody knows that that's the quickest way to get blisters. I, had, I experienced no blisters and the shoe felt really comfortable on my feet every single day, besides being you know wet every single day, which is, it was definitely uncomfortable. I'm not gonna lie to you there. But you know I couldn't expect the shoe to dry out because nothing was drying out. Typically, if you could set these out in the sun, I'd imagine for a couple hours, pretty easily they would dry out. So, cause they, cause they definitely, once we got off trail and we were along the lake and I set them out, they just, 
they were drying out pretty quickly. Um, I will say that they drained really quickly. So I didn't have, when I was waiting in these shoes, which I wouldn't recommend. Again, this is a torture test, right? I'm not saying like go out and use this shoe for this, but I'm just telling you that this thing stood up to seven days of really abuse and, and beyond what it should be used for. Um, one of the things I noticed that in wading and coming out of the creek, it drained, you know, the excess, excess water drained almost immediately. It's, it's immediately, it's got lots of uh, ports, lots of areas. You can see where it can dry out and drain out and even some ports along the bottom here in the sole. Um, so that was great because it did drain out. So I wasn't walking around with 100 pounds of, of water in my shoe all the time when I was getting wet. The other thing I looked at in terms of wading was, you know, and wear was, you know, you'll start to see some threads. This isn't happens with wading boots. You'll start to see threads start to loosen up and break and so forth in a shoe um, when you're wading a lot in creeks because you get a lot of scuffing. And when I was looking along here, I don't really see any scuffing. You know, there's not a lot of scuffing. There's one area I see some threading coming loose here. But again, I mean, this is extreme use. Uh, I probably have 150 total miles of hiking on these shoes so far too. So you got 150 miles of just walking, you know, and hiking in them. And then you got, you know, seven days of wet wade, wet wading, basically fishing with them. And uh, probably wouldn't do that again. I'd probably take some waders. But, uh, you know, I can see maybe a little bit of threading, uh, you know, and, and other than that, from, from the wading and so forth, there's nothing going on with the toe. That really concerned me because I thought, Again, I was kind of taking a risk in using these to wade and fish in. Um, and so um, the toe, all the toe is still intact. And that's unusual because even again with wading shoes, um, and if they're not built well, this is one of the first things that goes when you're wading around in shoes. And so I would say that, you know, they stood up to the torture test of seven days uh, really nicely. And so for the, using them for hiking, I can't see why they wouldn't last a long time and won't be very durable, you know, in, in terms of hiking. Now, you know, as far as usage, general usage, um, not just for wading, um, one of the things I do notice is that in the back, you're getting some compression here. Um, you know, in the back uh, with the foam. And so over time, I'd have to replace these because I'm just going to lose cushion. One thing about these shoes, you can see the stack height is pretty high. I think it's 30, 30 millimeters in the back height, and then it drops five millimeters to, millimeters, uh, to 25 millimeters in the front. So it's not a zero drop, they call it. So it's not perfectly flat. It's got a little bit of heel rise. I didn't mind that. I wanted something with like a five degree or five millimeter drop or less. I, and, and I kind of landed on these because I liked the cushion. The stack height is high, but I still found the shoe to be extremely stable. Uh, and then this is getting away from the torture test stuff, just the general usage that I've had out of the shoe. You can see that it's really wide and the lugging is really nice. I found that even you know, walking on wet trails, wet rock on trails, and of course wading, which they're not built for, um, I got plenty of traction. I didn't find myself being any more, you know, these are vibrant soles, so I didn't find myself slipping any more than I normally would have really with my real wading shoes on. So that was pretty cool. And again, equating that to trail running and, and just hiking in these, I think is a great, you know, kind of a great comparison because uh, they do have a really good tackiness to them. I can feel the tackiness now and a really good traction to them. Like any shoe, yes, they're pr prone to slipping. There's no shoe that's perfect, uh, but it definitely has a more than, I would say more than average gripping uh, on different wet surfaces. So that was great about the shoe in general for hiking. The other thing I liked about the shoe for hiking, it's got this extra wide toe box. And a lot of people don't realize that your feet get compressed into some hiking shoes. I've tried some trail runners uh, and you know two different trail runners that are pretty well known. And the problem with those, they were too narrow here. And so when I was hiking, it compressed my foot. And I think it caused a lot of fatigue in my feet during the day. Um, but now with this bigger toe box, my feet can splay out, spread better. And I feel like I get really like a lot, a lot less muscle fatigue in my feet, you know, uh, and my feet don't feel tired um, is, is easily through hiking on our longer hikes. And so that, that toe box that's wide was really good. Um, overall, I mean, it's a great shoe for hiking. Like I said, I've got probably 150 miles on this shoe. Um, it is still in fantastic shape. The only thing that's going to happen eventually is, you know, if I, if I feel like I'm not getting enough cushion, um, from the shoe, I'm going to have to change out, but I, I feel like the uppers and, you know, in the laces and, you know, the stitching, I feel like because I put it through that torture test, I feel like that's going to last me. And I just feel like this 
is probably the part that's going to cause me, you know, the, the cushion, losing the cushion is probably the part that's going to cause me to, to have to buy new shoes and change out again. These are about, I think, a hundred and I want to say $130. Look at their website now. Let's take a look at it. See, uh, let me see what I say. And 30 bucks. How much? Yeah. $130. Uh, so they're $130 on the website. They come in two different colors. So it's limited colors. Um, but I wasn't too worried about color. I was more worried about functionality. Uh, and these definitely lace up nice. and They feel good on my feet. Uh, the specs on it, like I said, is 30 to 25 millimeter drop. Um, the weight is 10.4 ounces for the mediums. Uh, and so that's on the light side as far as, you know, shoes you can wear, wear while you're hiking. Uh, and the function, the purpose of these is trail running. Um, but again, because I'm carrying lighter loads, you know, max probably I'd ever carry on my back is 35. Most of my, my loads are running from 25 pounds to 35 pounds. And I, I haven't hit over 30 uh, in my last few times out doing backpacking fly fishing trips. Um, so these shoes have been perfect. I feel like when you get into heavier loads, you know, above like 35 pounds or, or more, then maybe you need ankle support because you're just carrying more weight. But, but other than that, I, I feel I feel comfortable with this. Uh, some people won't, and, and that's okay. Um, so at any rate, <laughs> the shoes are still, the uppers are holding together fantastic uh, after 140 miles and a seven day underwater tor torture test uh, in the Smoky Mountains. And uh, it's a shoe that I would really, you know, uh, again, everybody's different. You got to try them on. You know, I tried two well-known brands, didn't like them, not because they were bad shoes. They were good quality shoes that cost some money, um, but they just didn't work for me. As a matter of fact, one of the shoes I, I wore it maybe like on five outings and I gave them to my son because he wears the same size and he loves them because they fit his feet. They fit the way he hikes, the way he walks. And, uh, and so he, he was using them actually in the Smokies. Um, so, you know, um, I want to say this, be very careful. You know, um, I'm not telling you like these are the best shoes or anything like that. I'm saying that these are shoes that are, that are built well. Uh, they have some great features to them. They seem very durable from what I've seen. Uh, and I've abused them in ways that they should not be used. Um, and I feel like they're worth a look, definitely. And I'm just trying to help out my fellow fly anglers, my fellow backpacking anglers, because sometimes, you know, it's, you look through all the backpacking stuff and, you know, guys are, you know, wearing certain brands and, and doing things like that. I have no affiliation, no brand. All I'm doing is saying, hey, this is something that you definitely want to check out. Uh, give it a shot. Um, and, uh, and maybe it's going to be right for you. The Topo Athletics Ultra Venture Trail Runner.